Before watching this video on sensing circuits, it will make sense to watch the video on potential dividers. That is the one just before this one. Uh, so let's have a look at this. So earlier on in the course, you came across a couple of components, the thermistor and the light dependent resistor or LDR. So here we have these two components. Now you'll have come across them and learned that the thermistor will vary its resistance depending on the temperature. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but I will just remind you of the pattern. So as the temperature increases, this will decrease the resistance of a thermistor. And with a light dependent resistor, the resistance is going to change depending on the light intensity. And again, as the light intensity increases, the resistance of the light dependent resistor is going to in, uh, decrease. So we have these two components. Both of them have the ability to vary the resistance depending on an outside variable. So in the case of the thermistor, the temperature, and in the case of the LDR, the light intensity. But how can we make this be useful within a circuit? Well, we can consider them in the context of potential dividers. So if we now have this thermistor in a circuit with another resistor, and if we say measured what the voltage was going to be across each of these, we would see that as the temperature increased, the voltage across both of these would change. The total voltage would remain the same, however, the share would be different. So as the temperature across uh, in this circuit increases, that means that the resistance of the thermistor is going to decrease. That would mean that the share of the voltage across the thermistor would decrease. And that means that the share across the resistor would increase. So let's see how we could make use of this. Let's imagine that we are trying to set up a system that would automatically turn on a heater when it's cold. Well, when it's hot, the share across the resistor is greater than the share across the thermistor. But when it's cold, the resistance of the thermistor increases. So when it's cold, the resistance of the thermistor increases. That will in turn increase the voltage across the thermistor. So if we were to connect our heater across the thermistor like this, then when it was hot, the thermistor wouldn't get very much power, it wouldn't get very much voltage, and so it wouldn't be able to turn on because the resistor would have a greater share of the voltage. But when it's cold, the resistance of the thermistor is going to increase, which means it gets a greater share of the voltage across it, and because the heater is in parallel to the thermistor, it is also going to get a greater amount of the voltage. So let's have a think about this for a fan, so the opposite case. So you would like a fan to turn on when it gets hot. So if the temperature has increased, what's that going to do to the resistance across the thermistor? Well, if the temperature has increased, that means that the resistance across the thermistor is going to decrease. That means that the voltage across the thermistor is also going to decrease. It is going to reduce its share because the resistance has increased. So to get a higher voltage across the fan when it is hot, instead of connecting it in parallel to the thermistor, we connect it in parallel to the resistor. So we connect our fan, which is basically just a motor, across the resistor. So let's look at the graph for the thermistor again, just to double check. So as T is increasing, R is decreasing. So there. 
this means we'll have a low resistance across the thermistor, so it gets a smaller share of the potential difference, the voltage, and a greater share will go across the fixed resistor, meaning that the motor of the fan, which will be in parallel to the fixed resistor, will get a higher share of the voltage. One final example to think about is the LDR, the light dependent resistor. Now we want to construct a circuit that is going to have a light turn on or get brighter when it gets dark. So let's again remind ourselves of the pattern for the LDR. So this one has light intensity along here and then resistance along here. And as the light intensity increases, the resistance of the LDR is going to decrease. So if we want a light to turn on when it's dark, that's at this point, which component are we going to want to connect it in parallel to? We're going to LDR. want to connect it in parallel to the LDR. As when the light intensity is low, the resistance of the LDR is going to be high. This means again it's going to get a greater share of the voltage in the circuit. So when the light intensity is low, when it's dark, the light will turn on. The final thing we need to think about is a potentiometer. This is a component that basically is a manual, manually controlled potential divider. So whereas with a thermistor or a LDR, you had to vary an external variable like the temperature or the light intensity, with this, you can just move a dial or move a slider up and down on this component and you'll change the proportion of the resistance on either side. So here is a basic diagram of one. What you've got is you have a resistor in here and you have a flying lead, something that could be attached to different parts of this resistor. So let's say it was directly in the middle. That would be like saying that you had two resistors, R1 and R2, where R1 would be equal to R2. Because it's directly in the middle, you've got the same resistance on either side of the divide. So that would mean if you'd hooked up another circuit to this, then they would have an equal voltage because of the potential divider. If we instead set it up like this, that will be like saying that we had R1 and R2, where because R1 is just this proportion of, say, that coiled wire, that resistor, then R1 is going to be far smaller than R2. That would mean that R1 if we hooked up a voltmeter across here, would have a smaller proportion of the voltage than R2.